You're listening to the Scars and Guitars podcast series. My name's Andrew Mackay-Smith, and the guest on this edition of the podcast series is Ryan Waste from the outfit Municipal Waste. The reason for the conversation is to promote the band's 2017 release, Slime and Punishment. Let's have a listen to what Ryan has to say. Here we go. Welcome to the Scars and Guitars podcast. The band have a new album titled Slime and Punishment released via Nuclear Blast coming out on June the 23rd. What can fans expect? Heavy, fast, balls out in your face, speed metal punk. Nice, nice. You guys have been doing this for close to, and correct me if I'm wrong, 20 years now, unbelievably. Do you feel like veterans? Yeah, man. I, well, it's, it's kind of a blur, really, man, because uh, it's been about 17 years, and um, I've, uh, I have consider it time traveling because we've been all around the world, but we were drunk the most of the time, so <laughs> you just kind of wake up in a new country, a new state, and uh, in, a, in a different state of mind. <laughs> yes, yes. So you guys started doing what you're doing at a time where there was very few, very few bands plowing the kind of metal that you guys produce. What got you into performing this, you know, SOD, DRI style metal? Well, it's the stuff I grew up listening to and, and definitely a lot more than that. I mean, we, uh, we just wanted to play something that was honest you know and something fast and aggressive and uh, you know a lot of i guess it's like if the late 90s early 2000s there's a lot of bullshit new metal and emo and just yes. pussy shit out there and, you know we wanted to come and crush all that so i mean but at the same time i mean I'm, I'm just playing what i grew up listening to you know i didn't really know how to play guitar i was a bass player beforehand and i just yep. picked up a guitar and just kind of what came out you know we didn't really put much thought into it you know I just really wanted to just go for it yeah, so you just mentioned there that you're a bass player crossed over to playing guitar. So do you still think uh, in terms of a bass player? And the reason why I ask the question is I'm a bass player who crossed over and started playing guitar as well. But uh, I still think that I've, I, uh, when I'm playing, I'm thinking in bass player terms. So is that the same for your good self? Yeah, it's, it's similar. I mean, I think the only reason I ever switched to guitar was just to start a band. I mean, I, I picked up the bass first. I still... I actually prefer to play the bass. I play bass in two other bands still. I play bat. I sing and uh, play bass in bat and then vulture, yes. which is more like heavy metal stuff. But yeah, I mean, I guess it's real rhythm based, you know? So, I mean, it's a good foundation, I think, for anyone to start on. It's it's a little, I mean, it's obviously, it's four strings. It's easier. <laughs> I think <Yes. laughs> uh, I'm, still, I'm still figuring out the guitar, man. I'm, I'm self-taught, you know? I, I never really took the fundamentals i just kind of did my own thing you know that's kind of how i learned and i'm also left-handed so i got another thing up oh, against gosh, me so yeah. i actually learned i learned how to play uh, upside down on right-handed guitars so so everything was all fucked up so that's why i ended up making a uh, custom guitar the mw axe because you yep. can never find a cool left-handed guitar so i just had to make my own yeah fair enough what do you think the secret to the band's success has been because as i said before you have been playing the type of metal that you've been playing for a long time you're probably the first ones to well there might have been underground bands that were playing it but you were the first band to really popularize it so what do you put the band's success down to i think it's for being ourselves man we don't we don't uh compromise for anybody we don't we don't listen to you know what a label or the media tries to tell you what to be we just we just do what feels right you know we're we're just not we're not like a facade we're not like a up there trying to be super evil and like you know we we interact with the crowd we we actually like involve the crowd into our show that's what makes it so much fun i think it's uh people feel like they're part of it when they see us you know they're jumping off the stage and um yep. you know if someone says something it's almost like a heckler like like please heckle us because i'll crush you i'd love to like <laughs> talk back and forth with the audience it's almost like what a comedian does you know but I mean, when it comes to the music, we're we're very serious about it. You know, it's not like we're just yes. like joking around all the time. I mean, we we know our shit, and but we're having fun, and there's a smile on people's faces. You know, at our gigs, you know, we're not we don't promote fighting or anything like that, or stupid, fake hardcore dancing or anything like that. So it's just we're there to have fun. Yeah, we're to enough. entertain. We are. Yeah. Well, you alluded to something there where, where you do take it very seriously, and to me that does come across. Otherwise, there's no way you could have had the career longevity that you have. And just to underline the point, many years ago you were on the front cover of a magazine that a lot of us used to read religiously, which was Metal Maniacs. 
but you were also appearing yeah. in um, in the I think it's the British let's call it the Tabloid Music Express NME. Um, so you're one of the few bands that's been able to cross over into let's call it mainstream music publications, but still say um, in the pages of loyal and true metal the metal press. How do you feel about that? Well, I didn't even know about the NME one because I mean we're in we're in the US, so I mean, we don't get to see all those magazines. The Metal Manex was a big deal for me because I used to read the magazine, you know, and, and the print magazine is a dying art that I still hope we could keep going. Like I, I actually write for a magazine, Iron Fist, out of uh, the UK. Right. I have a column cool. called Living Fast, which is also like a talk show I do. It's like a heavy metal talk show. So, I mean, I don't pay attention to, to mainstream stuff. I mean, if they're going to pay attention to us, great. You know, it just gives us more press. Yep. But I, I'm always rooted in the underground. I mean, I listen to bands that no one have ever heard of you know and i try to promote them you know this is all old stuff usually so i try to keep people you know in touch with with my roots and like what i listen to you know that's why i do that talk show living fast i talk about all my old records and yeah we try to throw some comedy and some horror shit in there too so i just started the show up again so it's been like a two-year hiatus i'm back again so when you, I haven't heard the show to be honest with you, mate. So when you talk about old records, you can what, watch it. It's a YouTube. It's a vi, it's a video uh-huh. show. You can actually watch it. Yeah. So what sort of records or what sort of bands do you play on the show? All, all like my one, my one uh, criteria was that whoever I'm interviewing, they have to be over fifty years old. So I did like <laughs> Mantis from Benham. I did Michael nice. Denner from Merciful Fate, John Gallagher from Raven, the guys from Razor from Canada. Those are those are my first like four guests. Yes. And I pull out old vinyl and I talk about what got them into heavy music. And it's usually like hard rock based stuff. And I have a huge record collection. I'm, I'm trying not to just sound like I'm bragging, like I actually give a shit about all this stuff. No, you're a, a fan, I'm I can tell. Yeah. Very passionate. Yeah, I'm a very passionate music fan. I'm, I'm always buying, trying to seek out records that I want. And that's, I've had, I don't sell them. You know, I'm not like here. It's not a matter of money or anything for me. It's just like a matter of uh, just owning it and being surrounding myself with the stuff that I like. And I try to like make it in a with the show. I try to make it in a fun, fast-paced way where, you know, people have such short attention spans these days. It's just it's you know it's tough to engage people. Yeah, but yeah, I, I did the show like about you know four years ago, and and I I you know I'm touring nonstop, so I try to keep it going while I was on tour. And yeah. I just put together another episode, and I got a. I did. I got more in depth with like my vinyl collection, just telling people, you know, about shit they might not have heard of. You know, I did like a U.S. metal edition. So, yeah, it should be coming out pretty soon, maybe in July. All right, you just so look up Living Fast on YouTube, you'll find it. Living Fast. All right, mate. No, I definitely will. Um, yeah. So, talking about records and record production, you uh, were well, one of the bands that probably got in on the ground floor with Christopher Harris, aka Zeus. What was it like working yeah. with him? He's just a good friend. I mean, he sought us out a long time ago. You know, he's up, lives up in the Northeast, and he's an old thrasher, man. I mean, he's he's known for doing more like hardcore stuff. But I mean, he grew up on thrash metal, so when he heard us, he was like, "Man, I gotta I gotta produce you guys. I gotta do we gotta do a record together." We ended up doing two records with him: Art of Partying and Massive Aggressive. He probably wants to do our new record, but we we uh, recorded ourselves <laughs> this time. You know, yeah, cool. and we sent it over to Bill Maytoyer, uh, who was another old, yeah, uh, friend of mine that did all the old Metal Blade shit, Metal Massacre, Comps, and Slayer, fucking Lizzie Board and everything, man. Dark Angel. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so Zeus, so Zeus is the man. Zeus, uh, I think Zeus gets plenty of work, though, so I don't feel bad. Like, he's still producing stuff, and we, we keep in touch still to this day. So he's a good, good buddy of ours. Sweet. Uh, he's a very interesting guy to listen to talk to, actually, because he, uh, he's he been on the Jamie Jaster podcast at least once, because I've listened to one of his episodes. Yeah, they're good there. friends. Yeah, yes. they're good buddies. Cool, cool. So I am talking to you from the road at the moment. Whereabouts are you? I know you're on the Warp the Tour. Yeah, but... Seattle. Well, the, we're on the first day of it, so um, we're trying to get our free shoes. And, I'm, like, I, of course, I get there late, and they don't have shit oh, that shit. I want. Yeah. I mean, enough. yeah, life sucks, right? My, I can't get my free shoes. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I mean, I actually wear Vans. I wear the Vans slip-ons because I'm on tour, you know, I'm traveling, so, and they didn't have any. Yeah. They probably yep. just got snatched up before anything else, but, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we haven't started the tour. We, we got here for the first day, so everyone's just feeling it out. I mean, it's a huge production, so shitload of bands. I mean, it's, it's chaos right now because everyone's just got here, so we'll see how it goes. Okay, mate, no worries. Talking about touring, too, you've, uh, you've toured with Destruction, You've toured with The yeah. Haunted, and you've also toured with Suicidal Tendencies, but what was your favorite tour? 
Oh man, actually, one of my favorite tours was the Australian tour we did, the the last cool. one, because uh, we, I I love uh, the people. I think I just get along with the vibe. I think there's there's a certain uh, rowdiness to uh, Australians that, that and a, the a sense of humor <laughs> that I just that I just I just it just felt right, you know. And the women too. I get really get along <laughs> with the women very well over there. I can, um, we'll just leave it at that. Yeah. But I mean, it's it's. Man, it's just a fun. It's a fun vibe. That's the only way, only way I can really describe it. It seems like people, they're even like the, watching the news. Like it seems like they're just joking around, like they're not taking shit serious. <laughs> it's like I don't take this shit serious. So fit right in. Yeah, oftentimes we don't realize, um, you know, that ourselves. We we I speak to a lot of people all over the world, musicians all over the world, and um, I do get that feedback quite a bit. But I guess because we're we're standing within it so much, we don't realize it. We have to be reminded of it. So I hope we keep it as we. I hope we keep it as we move forward as a nation. Put it that way. Um, yeah, I mean, it came across in a good way for me. So, keep it up. Sweet, sweet. So, just on on that note as well, do you um are you familiar with many Australian bands? Do they, do, do many Australian bands make you a vinyl collection? Yeah, uh, you know, the band I really like is that old rock band Buffalo from Australia. Yeah, yeah cool. Really cool band. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, off like uh, Hobbs Angel of Death, I guess if you're talking uh, thrash metal, it's another good one. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, Slaughter, Slaughter Lord, that's uh, an Australian band. Old yeah, it is. Band. Yeah, you know all about Slaughter it. Lord. It's good. Yeah, Slaughter Lord, Mortal Sin was another one from back in the day. Mortal yeah. Sin. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I'm a, I usually know my my regional. I always do when I do my show. I, I kind of go regional, so I just had to think of a few. But yeah, no, you guys know you know how to do it out there, man. <laughs> all right, no worries. Hey, look, I've got um, I've come to the stage in the interview where I have three questions that I ask all of my interview subjects, and these are the last three questions, by the way, because I want to let you get back to pursuing the uh, the uh, finding the shoes for yourself, your good self there, mate. Yeah. But, um, I'd, cool. love, I'd love it if you could humour me here and play along. And your answers, by the way, mate, can be as not safe for work as you like because I am an R-rated program. So here goes. Choose three words to describe yourself. Um, so I can, I can say whatever I want. You said exactly. there's an R-rated thing? Totally, yep. Go hard. Uh, rude, crude, and hungry. Nice. Second question. If you could go back to when you were 18 and give yourself some advice, what do you think you'd say? Hide my drugs better. <laughs> when crossing into the Canadian border or just anywhere in general? <laughs> it's just from the cops, man. <laughs> okay. All right, final question. I'm really interested to hear your response to this one here because this usually stumps, uh, stumps the interview subjects that I ask. What five guests, living or dead, would you invite to dinner? Five guests, living that's, or dead, that's to correct. dinner? Yep. Okay. Um, well, I like being around women, so, I mean, let's get uh, let's get Bridget Bordeaux and her day. I don't know if you know who that is. Oh, yeah, God. Um, yeah. Awesome. Uh we got to bring Lemmy back because Lemmy, you know, he's a gentleman. He's going to treat the women well. So that's two. Uh, well, it seems I'm used to, like, assembling the, the ultimate band, so I always get that question. But, I mean, I, uh-huh. I'd like to uh, – we, we got to have an equal amount of men and women here. So um, let's let's bring uh, – so they can be alive or dead, right? Absolutely. And any time in history, too. Any time in history. Okay. Um well, let's bring Dio back because I, I, I'm just so like used to this this metal question. So I got to get Lemmy and we got to get Dio in the same room because yep. they're you know they're they're intellectuals and you know they're not gonna maybe they will still away the chicks. I don't know. We'll <laughs> see. Um, man, uh, let's get Salma Hayek because I don't want to just have like you nice. know we don't need just blondes. We need something more you know something international there. Yep, a, a better blend. So that's four right there, right? Do I get to come? Can I? Can I hang? What up? you are? You're Am already sixth person. You're already invited. Yeah, that's right. Yep, you're, you're the sixth person. Yep. I mean, I I got a lot of friends that are just deceased that I'd like to bring back. You know, I mean, it's it's tough, but I mean, they might not be known to people. Uh, yeah, maybe I'd I'd bring our old drummer back who, who just passed away, and I I tried to straighten him out a little bit. I'd have to. He wouldn't be able to partake in the no. in the booze and the drugs with us, but. Uh, we got we got two hard rock and heavy metal legends, two beautiful women, and I'm gonna try to bring my drummer back uh, to straighten him out a little bit. So how about that? Bring Brandon. 
Well, very thoughtful, mate, very thoughtful. And I might add as well, um, I really like the fact that you've included Bridget Bardot, the only other person I would probably um, include in that for a, a the seventh guest, including a good self, would be Raquel Welch, because she was certainly something back She's in the She's great. Oh, yeah. I mean, I like the classic beauty like that. Yeah, likewise. So, um, yeah. Yeah, likewise. My ex-girlfriend looks like Bridget Bardot, so that was a little nod to her. We're still close. Nice. No, good on you, mate. Um, mate, I'll, I'll let you get back to what you're doing there. Um, f- congratulations on a wonderful career. Um, I hope you guys come down to Australia sometime soon. From what I've heard, oh, we will, man. I think nice. we're working on something. Yeah, for sure. Okay, sweet. All right, mate. Um, all the very best again, and uh, hopefully I'll catch up with you when you come down to Australia. Cheers, man. Take it easy. All right, thanks, mate. You've been listening to the Scars and Guitars podcast series. My name's Andrew Mackay-Smith, and that interview subject was Ryan Waste from The Outfit, Municipal Waste. Thanks so much for listening.